uh, thinking about something happening on the news on yesterday, and I was I was thinking about um, a conversation that I was I was having. We had a, uh, a shooting yesterday at a gun shop, and um, just thinking about a conversation I was having, and I was I was thanking God. I was thanking God for 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 all the things that he protected me from that I didn't know or that I don't know or that I can't see. And, and God is so good. And this is, that, see, when your doctrine doesn't line up with your living, you, you know, if it was really your prayer that was, that was hitting every point that was keeping everything off, in other words, if, if, if God was looking at your prayer and God is saying, I'm, predic- I'm, I'm going to predicate my protection based on your prayer and based on you hitting the target all the time. Then how miserable would we be? But God will protect us from dangers that we don't have knowledge of, from, from, from traps and plots and plans that we I'm grateful to God and grateful for his grace and as as much knowledge as I believe that I have about God, there's still some things that I I can't take credit for. I just have to say, but his grace. <laughs> his but 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 his mercy. That 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 it, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. It wasn't my prayer. I know we like to tell you, it wasn't my prayer, it wasn't my fasting, it was it was his mercy. It, it wasn't it wasn't my doing good, it wasn't my my seed that blood. It wasn't, it wasn't it. We're always looking to be included. It wasn't it, it was his mercy. It was his mercy, it was his mercy. I'm grateful for it. It was his grace, it was his loving kindness. Yes, I pray. But there are things that God is doing for me that I can never get done for myself. Today for a few minutes, I'm I'm in between. I'm trying to move forward with with and in something. Um, The book of Romans chapter number six. I'm trying to move forward and... I've been dealing with the demonic spirit world and I, I, I've went from, um, we've went from, we've learned about spirits. We've learned about um, that every spirit is not disembodied. We've learned that as people of God, that our, our victory is already won. What we're being tempted with in the realm of, of um, and, and I'm gonna say it again, just in case somebody don't understand. I'm gonna say it again. God and the devil can't possess you. Let, let, let me start this off before I, I move into this. See, depending on what you've been trained and how you've been trained and who trained you, if you've been trained by some of the early manuals in relation to deliverance, you t- you view everything as a spirit. You you can't now. Let me stay with me. You can't get sleepy without naming it a spirit. You can't get fatigued without calling it a spirit. You can't get dehydrated without calling it a spirit. And so what happens is when you've been taught a certain way, it's going to have you to pivot towards a certain side. But I want to say before you start dying, before you are definite, you need to go through a diagnosis. You need to go through the, 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 the laws, the, the things that we have been teaching you. You need to discern, wait, wait a minute, is, 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 this, is this some spirit that has come in or is this just me? Is this the way that I'm thinking? Is it my emotions or, or is it a spirit? And so I want to say before I move forward, once again, that everything is not a, 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 a demon on you. Everything is not to be demonized, although there are many demons. But what happens is when we are taught a certain way, we end up thinking a certain way, and we end up calling everything demonic. Some things are not demonic. Some things are just decisions. 
Y'all should have said amen. Some things are just things that I made a decision to do. It wasn't demonic. Now watch this. Once I continued to make a decision to do it, I opened up a door for a spirit. And when I say a spirit, I opened up a door for an attitude. Not something that possesses me, but I've opened up myself now. Now I opened up myself to something called a soul cycle. That's what I call it, Morgan. A soul cycle. And now my soul has developed a certain appetite, a certain craving for a certain thing. Are you listening? And so the believer needs to understand, and we're going to deal with it today, the believer needs to understand that there's no generational curse that we're under. And, and, and it's crazy how believers are so, they want to teach you as the pastor, no, nah, but I am under, so, so wait, so you, you, you deem yourself, you, you are in agreement, you're saying that you're under a curse, even after the blood of Jesus has washed you, has purified you, has cleansed you, you're still saying you're under a curse? So, so what happens is in your mindset, in your mentality, in your soul, your spirit is redeemed. But in your soul, you see residue. In your soul, you see glitches. In your soul, you see traits of your past. Your spirit is secure. Your spirit is where the Holy Ghost lives. But in your soul, you see traces. You see residue. You see pollution. You have memories. You have things that come up that remind you of what you used to do and who you were back then. Somebody said who you were. Not who I am presently, but who you were. And so the enemy is using information. The enemy is using the past. The enemy is using soul cycles to oppress the believer. Not possess, not possess, oppress. Let me say it again. Not, not possess, oppress. Luke chapter number 13. I'll take you back to Romans. Luke chapter number 13. God saved me. He did. He saved your spirit. Your spirit is saved. Your spirit is holy. Your spirit is most like God. God lives there. But your soul is where the seat of your personality, your desires, your emotions, your imagination, write it down. The soul is the seat of the personality, the imagination, the volition, the will resides in the soul. Luke chapter number 13 and verse number 10 Luke 13 and verse number 10, and it reads like this. Read. Uh, he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. They read. They had a woman who had a spirit. This woman had a spirit, and she had it. For 18 years, I want you to write this down. An infirmity is a weakness, rather physical or moral, psychological. The woman had a spirit of infirmity. Watch this. And the Bible says she was what now? And could in no wise do what now? It, she, watch this. She, she, in other words, she, this woman is hunched over. And, and what was causing this, y'all ready? I hope I break this down pretty good so you can understand. What was causing this was not Arthur. Uh, arthritis wasn't caught. Watch this. Watch this. And so this is why I said that before we immediately go into warfare and start buking and binding, we got to first examine. Hold on. Let, let's make sure 
that you don't have any, any damage somewhere in your ligaments. Let, let's make sure that what you're dealing with did not come from sports trauma or you playing sports. Let's make sure before we demonize this and call this a knee spirit or, or a bone spirit, let's make sure that we go through and say, wait a minute, from whence cometh this? Where did it come from? Why is the knee? Why is the knee hurting? Why is the back hurting? Why is the head hurt? Is the head hurting because of poor posture? Do you know that poor posture can cause you to have uh, uh, headaches and neck aches? Do you know that most people have poor posture, that, that we lean like this? Are you listening to what I'm saying? But watch this, though. But in certain segments, in certain sects, immediately, if somebody is bowed down, if someone can't lift themselves up, immediately we Deem it as a spirit. Now, in this situation, it was a spirit that was causing this woman to be hunched over, bowed down. But in, watch this. In all cases, this is not so. Uh, somebody, something's going on. Something going on with their foot. We got to check it out first. We got to we got to rule out that 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 is not uh, a, what you call that. Does it gout? We got to rule out that it's not gout. We got to we got to rule out that that you didn't fall, that you didn't twist your ankle before we call it a spirit. We got to rule out some other things. Well, y'all want y'all say amen? We got to rule out some other things because we can't go first and just call it and say that's a demon. When you're trained a certain way, when you're taught a certain way, you become hypersensitive to a certain thing. And you see everything. Your eyes see everything through the lens of demon. That, am I making the point clear? But in this situation, y'all ready? But in this situation, it was not arthritis. It was not some kind of trauma or incident. In this situation, there was a Spirit that was causing this woman to be bowed down. And this is what the Holy Spirit was giving to me. And she could not lift up herself. Verse number 12. Let's read this. Watch this stuff. Watch this. Read. Verse number 12. Skip. So they go through this discourse of him doing good on the Sabbath day and, and he shouldn't heal on the Sabbath day. Verse number 15. The Lord answered them and said, Thou hypocrite, do it not each one of you. On the Sabbath, loose his ox on his ass from his stall and lead him to a way to watering. Verse number 16, read it, everybody, read it, everybody, read it. Being, being a daughter of Abraham, part elder of the covenant. She understands she's part. If during this time, you need to understand that Jesus, primarily his ministry was to Israel was to Jewish people, not to Gentiles. Watch this, y'all. This woman is walking bowed down, and she is a daughter of Abraham. She is part of the seed. She is part of the covenant. She, she's supposed to be receiving the benefits, the rights exclusively belong to her. You better catch what I'm saying. And he said, same thing then is what's going on now. Watch this. Although Satan cannot possess the people of God, he has them bound. He has them oppressed. He has them suppressed. He has them, watch this y'all, not walking to the measure of the stature of of Christ glory to God when you're not walking according to the fullness of the stature of Christ what happens is you live beneath your privilege you always have in your mind some type of bondage some type of something that's holding you back and holding you down 
There are certain things, watch this y'all, that you can get free of just by receiving the knowledge of the truth. You don't even need to go off and pray for 40 days and 40 nights. You don't even have to go off and fast for three days and three nights. But what happens is we're living in a time of ignorance that people perish for a lack of knowing. To the book of Ephesians. So this was causing this woman, a demon was debilitating her. A demon was causing, it was a spirit. And Jesus with his word, with his word, with his word, Bible say immediately she was loose. Let me see how I can connect this Ephesians chapter number four. Verse number 13, Satan knows that he can't possess you. Satan knows it better than you. As long as Satan can keep you ignorant from the truth, you will remain bowed down. You can go to heaven, but you can't live the life that Jesus has made available for you. Let me say it again. I just want to make it to heaven. I just want to make it in. Uh, Come on. That's where most believers live. They just want to make it in, brother. They don't, no, no, watch this. I understand that I'm just a pilgrim. I understand that I'm just passing here. But if I got to live here for 90 years, 100 years, I might as well get my benefits. I might as well walk out with God. God didn't intend for you to be a bowed down believer. I'm just doing my best to make it in. That's sad. That's oppression. I'm coming up on the rough side. Oppression. I'm just trying. Lord, please. Watch this now. Watch this now. Old covenant. Please don't cast me out of your presence. Fear. Watch this. I want you to write it down. Number one, ignorance will keep you bowed down. Ignorance will keep you in fear. Ignorance will keep you in isolation. Ignorance will keep you from receiving, from walking out all of what Jesus has provided for you. My people are perishing because they're ignorant. Ephesians chapter number 4, verse number 13 says this, Until we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Watch this. Of the knowledge of the Son. Now this daughter was a seed of Abraham, but but she didn't have knowledge. In other words, watch this, y'all. You can be a part of the body, but then not have knowledge, not know how to walk out certain things. Don't understand your birthright. Don't understand your covenant rights. Don't how to don't know understand how to cleanse yourself, how to keep yourself free. You better say amen. How to keep yourself free and contaminated from the pollutions of the world. And so it's possible to be a son. It's possible to be a daughter, but you bow down because you don't have the knowledge. He says, until we all come into the unity of the faith, of the knowledge of the Son of God, I tell you that this, what we believe, what we belong to, is not a cult, is not a religion, but this is centered around a person that he wants to have a relationship with us. That, that, that glory to God, that our relationship with God is more than just right and wrong. It's more than just big sin, little sin. It's more, and many people are at the very base. And what happens is when all you see God as just this intimidator, as this God that's going to whip you when you do something wrong, you won't see him as your loving father. You won't see him as your cultivating father. You won't see a father that cares for you. You you see a person that's trying to restrict you, trying to restrain you. Daddy don't understand. I need to have fun. No, you don't understand the love of the father. And when you don't understand the love of the father, your prayer life will always be limited. Your prayer life will always be restricted and you will always be walking low. Bow down. Bow down. Because I don't have the knowledge so I'm bowed down. They, they told me that God is a killer. I don't, want, I don't want to play with that thing. Can't commit to anything because you're afraid that God is going to get you. Uh, uh, or else you either think I got to cleanse myself. I got to get myself together. Bow down. Oppressed because of the teaching that you've been under. 
glory to God. He says, watch this, y'all, until uh, the word perfect there, write it down, means a mature man. A mature man. A mature man is not bowed down. A mature man, watch this, understands the knowledge of God. It's rooted in the love of God, grounded in the love of God. Unto the measure of the stature, catch it, read, of the what? Of the what? In other words, it's denoting, elder, it's denoting grow up. Verse 14, read. Uh-oh, that we henceforth be no what now? Look at that. Stop. Let me walk. i right, be slow. Stop. Write it down. Belief systems. Right. Most of the time as preachers, we immediately start attacking the behavior. But the behavior is only a result of the belief system. If we deal with things, glory to God. But watch this. The scripture says in the book of Matthew chapter 3 that the axe must be laid to the root. In other words, if we're dealing with fruit and if we're not dealing with root, you're going to find out we're going to always be able to cut some things off for a period of time. But after a while, it's going to continue to grow up because we never got to the root of the matter. And so most of the time as leaders and pastors, we deal with behaviors. I wonder why they're behaving like that. They're behaving like that because they believe like that. If we don't start attacking the root of the system, if we don't get to the root of the problem, then it's just like medicine. Medicine, oftentimes, is just a cover-up. It'll cover up. It just it just masks certain things. But but if you really want to be healthy, you're gonna have to deal with the root of the issue. And most of the time, the root of the issue, we're gonna have to cut away some stuff. We're gonna have to cut back from certain things. We don't like for the doctors to tell us you're not gonna be able to eat that anymore. Oh, y'all won't say man. We just need some medicine to mask it up. We don't want to cut back from the things that pollute us and contaminate us. So we just mask it up. Uh -uh, I got to have that. Uh -uh, I got to have it. I don't want to deal with the root of it. You're not going to tell me. I, you, you, what? You're not going to cut away no hog skins from me. I take the medicine. What are you doing? You're masking. Because you refuse to deal with the root of it. What you need to understand, the reason why people are bound, the reason why whole systems are bound, whole regions are bound, the reason why nations are bound is because of belief systems and doctrines that have been dedicated to devils. You should have said amen. Bible said that many, I'm sorry, that some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirit and doctrines of devils, doctrines of devils, belief systems. In other words, the only way we're going to be able to attack belief systems, we are going to need a teacher. We're going to need someone who's going to cause us to be ground. The devil don't care if you have church. The devil don't care. And you're a bow down believer. You have looked at God and you have limited God. You see him in the confines of a two hour service of a three hour service. Nah, we need the word of God to teach us how to live on Monday. We need the word of God to teach us how to live on Tuesday. But most of us are Pharisees. Pharisees have all the outward things. We have all the glit. We have all the glam. You looked powerful in service. You fell out in service. You vomited in service. But when you get up out of here and you tempted with that thing again, is there any word to restrain? I found out so many people are not submitting now just stay with me today stay with me today how how can you resist the devil when there's no word to defend against him write this down a deliverance key you cannot predicate your deliverance based on how you feel Deliverance is truth-based. It is not emotion-based. It's truth-based. 
How many times you see people cry and so and watch this and I'm, I'm, all, I'm all for that because I believe something gets started. I believe something gets opened up. But I believe if we are going to continually walk in the plan of God and walk in God's best, there needs to be a word and there's going to be a word that needs to be a teacher. The enemy doesn't care if you have church for three hours, if you have church for three days, if you didn't receive the seed of the word, if there's no understanding, if there's no grounding, you won't be able able to defend you just be praying off a wish in a prayer that's what many of you got a wish in a prayer that means you really don't know how to defend yourself against him there's no word to stand up against him but so you just keep praying and what you don't understand you cannot pray away temptation are you with me Wait, are you still with me? The Bible says, carried about with every wind and doctrine. As long, watch this, as long as you remain in the baby stage, you're going to remain in a bow down stage. In other words, there's a time for milk and there's a time for meat. You call it growth. You can't remain a baby forever. When you are in a baby stage, what happens is you are tossed to and fro. Everything somebody say, everything that come across social media, everything that sound good to the ears, every voice that sounds good, everything that open up the word and say, I'm preaching Jesus. You just listen to it. You give ear to it. You give attention to it. Toss to and fro. You eating off of everybody's table. You listening to everybody's anointed to you. You don't even know the difference. Toss to and fro with every wind of doctrine. Every new doctrine that come out, you jump on. Name it and claim it. Manifest it. Just whatever you think, say it. Visualize it. Just every new thing that come out, you get on board with it. I stopped listening to trendy pastors a long time ago. When I start finding out that a lot of stuff that they was moving with was trends and not the Holy Spirit, I said, wait a minute, I like the style, but the substance is off and the spirit is off. Bow down, believers. Don't understand that Jesus paid the price. He is already here praying, getting prayer lines and sending out thousands and thousands of dollars trying to get God to move in your marriage, trying to get God to move in your ministry, trying to get God to move in a specific situation, paying dollars like Simon the Sorcerer. We need the Holy Ghost to move God. Let's just fast and pray for the, all these different doctrines and these different beliefs that, that keep you bound down that keep you oppressed bow down because you don't know that Jesus already paid the price for your healing and that you don't even got to pray long and hard you just have to learn how to receive what he's already done ah, that's too easy pastor I got to work to the bow down believer, grace is, sounds eerie. Grace sounds too simple. Grace, it just sounds, it don't sound right. Something just don't sound right about grace. Tell me what I got to do to work this thing. The bow down believer. No, let's not go any further. Let's stop right here before I get all messed up. Watch this. The quality of your, of your life is decided by what you choose to believe. No, no, no. The, the quality of your life. Watch this. I'm going to say it again. You don't, have to, you don't have to have a good basis or belief system to go to heaven. You just need to believe in Jesus. But if you're going to have the promises of God, if you're going to tap into the supply of the Spirit, if you're going to live God's best, if you're going to be a blessing to people, then you're going to need to come up. You're going to need to grow out of ignorance. You're going to need a fivefold. You're going to need a teacher. I tend to believe. I mean, we got people quoting all kind of stuff. All things happen for a reason. Okay. Where does that say that in the word? Watch this. Watch this. You have to beware of lying comfort. What I mean by lying comfort is sometimes I'm going to call it lying consolation. 
that, that what happens is what you fix in your mind consoles you. But it is against the truth of God's word. It is lying consolation. It makes you feel better. It, 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 you start thinking of things that don't have any answers for. And all of a sudden, you start coming up with conclusions. See, what happens is when you don't have proper closure to a certain thing, what happens is you start coming up and you start extrapolating. And you start piecing together. And put, if the Holy Spirit don't reveal a certain thing or if facts don't reveal a certain thing, then what happens is you better be you better be mindful of a lying consolation. I know it. No, you don't know. You wasn't there. Lying consolation. It makes me feel better. I'm consoled by it. It helps me to get through my days, but it is not the truth. Wait, are y'all getting that? No, no, let, let me stay. No, 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 no. Let, let me walk. Let me, let me walk slow. Let, let me stay right here. Well, well, well watch this. Well, you know, you like 16. Well, well, maybe God knew what they was going to do. So God just, God just killed them. Wrong. God, maybe God just took her and then somebody come with him, sir. But that, you know, some, somebody, you know, same night. Well, they're saying that, you know, they've been talking about the Lord a lot. It's, it's just all these different, all these different. I know I'm, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. I want to be sensitive, but all these different lying consolations, all these different things that we tell ourselves to make these things more palatable. We make them make ourselves feel better, but it's a lie. When the Holy Spirit does not reveal a certain thing, does not reveal a certain truth, oftentimes you have to submit it to God and say, God, I don't understand why. God, I don't know why, but Lord, I submit it to you. I'm not going to keep racking my brain night and day trying to figure out. I'm not going to cause myself anxiety. Instead, I'm going to commit it to you. Y'all didn't say amen. Beware of lying consolation. It's against the truth, but it works for you. It consoles you. Where does it come from? Where does it come from, Elder? Everything happens for a reason. Well, i tell you the reason why it happened. Where does it come from? It comes, it springs from our belief system. Where does it come from? Where does the spirit of racism come? Where's an attitude? Where does it come from? It comes from a belief system. It comes from adapting to something that you believe, that you see, that's against the word. These are all attitudes the scripture comes. Wait, y'all better stay with me. I'm teaching what you believe, what you've been taught. He said, every wind of doctrine, I'm going to stay right there. Go to the book of Acts. Book of Acts, chapter number 8. Wait, not Acts 8, Acts 9. Acts 9. Acts, 9. Acts chapter number 9. My pictures, my, not my pictures. I'm looking at wrong stuff on my book. Y'all forgive me. Forgive me, Acts chapter number 10. Acts chapter number 10, verse number 10. Acts 10 and 10. Am I doing okay so far? Y'all, are y'all with me so far? Yes. Are y'all with me? Watch this. Verse number 10, Acts 10 and 10. And he became very hungry. Read. Verse 11. Four footed beasts, wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. Verse 13. And there came a voice to him that said, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. Now you need to understand why Peter says, I've never eaten anything that is common or unclean. What you need to understand is that the Jews had a, a set of, of dietary laws called the kosher. A kosher is not a pickle, but it's a set of dietary laws. And what happened was you find these things in the book of Leviticus and in other places where you shall not eat, thou shalt not touch it. And what happens is what you guys need to understand is that even though there's nothing unclean in itself and that we can eat anything 
everything and all things are blessed and sanctified, but that if we're going to live a productive life, we're going to live a healthy life, a life to the full, then some of those laws need to be looked at because God was trying to say, watch this, this is not good for you, not so much in a way where it's sinful, but he said, this might not be the best for you. I have observed, and I'm telling you, this is not the best for you. But y'all understand what I just said. For somebody to say, we preaching, are you listening? Bible said that Peter says, he says, a voice says, kill and eat. And Peter said, no, my, in my Jewish culture, I, I don't eat this kind of stuff. My diet, I, no, 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 no. But what God was trying to show him using this imagery that it wasn't about four-footed beasts, what God was trying to show him that these wild animals, God was trying to show him basically that the Gentiles will be grafted in. That God was ready to send the gospel to the nation of the Gentiles and that he was getting ready to move beyond Jerusalem and beyond the Jews and he's ready to move to the Gentile, us, a non-Jew. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Watch this. So he said, and the voice spoke again the second time. What God had cleansed, that called not thou what now? Common. This was done three times. And the vessel was what? No, no, no. Watch this. Watch this. Because what God had to deal with in Peter, God had to deal with his ways. God, God, God said, Peter, Peter, you know, it came to him three times. This, this is signifying the confirmation. It comes to him three times, and Peter's like, but, but I got a problem with that. God is preparing Peter to send him to minister the gospel to the Gentiles, but, but Peter has some isms. Wait, wait, you mean to tell me that Peter is saved, but he has some isms, some, some hang-ups, some, some preferences? And by the way, please don't make your preferences a doctrine. In other words, God had to deal with Peter's heart. Peter couldn't even understand. He continues to miss it. And so it comes to him three times. What are you saying, Pastor Kevin? Peter was saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, but he had some soulish issues. He had some issues that need to be worked out on the inside of him. This would not be the only time that Peter would deal with these isms. He would deal with it again in the book of Galatians. Say, but I got soul issues and cycles that need to be broken. Save and love God, but my belief system is off. Save and love God, but I don't like certain people. Y'all better say amen. Save and I love God, but so and so, I think I'm better than them. Stay with me because you deem these people as not being saved. The first thing you start saying is that how can he be saved the same way you can be saved and have the filth of the flesh? That's classified racism and all these isms and schisms and divisions are classified under the filth of the spirit. To the book of, I told you I was going to get there. Let me walk this thing. Give me a few more minutes. Second Corinthians chapter number seven. Glory to God. Glory to God. Saved, sanctified. I'm part of the seed. I'm part of the covenants. The covenant belonged to me. The rights belong to me. But I'm a bow down believer. I'm oppressed. I got my own perspectives, own thoughts. Second Corinthians chapter 7, verse number 1. Second Corinthians 7 and verse number 1. What does it say? Having therefore, Having therefore these promises, Billy beloved, let us cleanse ourselves. Let's read that one more time. Second Corinthians chapter number seven and verse number one. Let's read that again. Now the promises that he's referring to are located in first and second Corinthians chapter six when he's telling them to be separate. And to come out from among them. And he's saying that he's going to receive us. And he's saying that he's going to be a father. And we will be his son. Somebody said those promises. So he says let us cleanse ourselves from all of the filth. Somebody say self-cleansing. 
cleanse ourselves from all of the filthiness of the flesh. Can I ask you guys a question? Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Whatever your rule or whatever your standard is, is there a certain rule that you only have to take a shower one time a day? Is there a certain rule? No, 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 no. I'm asking you one more time. When it comes to the laws of self-cleansing, is there a certain rule or limitation or restriction that says that you should only shower once a day? No, there is none. When you are a child, and what happens is around four or five years old, what happens is your mother starts training you how to what? How to cleanse yourself, how to take your own bath. Are you, are you still with me? You're growing up now. And so what happens is the blood of Jesus saved your spirit. But watch this now. Now it's your prerogative. Now it is your responsibility. It is your accountability. You must take into account that it's my job to renew my mind. It's my job to cleanse myself. Look how he wrote it. Let us cleanse ourselves. No, read again. Let us cleanse ourselves. Write this down. This cleansing is not a cleansing. Now, no, 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 no. Everyone look up at me. Now, let me see if this makes sense. And this is why I'm going to show you there's a difference between the spirit and the soul. Can a man cleanse himself from sin? You don't know. Okay. When Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden and they ate off the tree, what happened? Immediately, they sold lit fig leaves together and they tried to cover themselves. And the Bible said later on in the same chapter that the Lord God took coats of skins denoting that blood was shed and an animal sacrifice had taken place. That God was saying that anytime you try to save yourself or cleanse yourself through any ritual, through any routine, it is unacceptable in my sight. He says your righteousness is as filthy rags. You have all become as an unclean thing. And so I'm going to ask you again, can a man cleanse himself from sin? You seem to be puzzled. And maybe my viewers are. So I'll work. Go to the book of Revelation chapter number one. Revelation 1 and verse number 5. Read, what does it say? He washed us from our what? So I'm going to ask you again. Can you save yourself from sin? No, they still don't believe it. It's not good enough. It's not registering yet. The book of Romans. Romans chapter number three. Romans 3 in verse number 23. Romans 3 and 23. For all have what now? For all have sinned and done what? Stop. Rest right here. Stop. I'm in a teaching mode today. Stop. This is widely used, for instance, you ever heard the song, we fall down, we get up for a saint is just a sinner? A saint is not a sinner, sir. Yeah, that's right. That is a good song, but it is not lining up with the word. A saint is no longer a sinner. A, a, a sinner is a sinner, and a saint is a saint. He said a saint is just a sinner. No, a saint used to be a sinner. We've been trained and most of our doctrine has been learned from songs that don't line up with the word, but they're good songs. And you need a teacher. I was messing with him this morning about the two wings. I want two wings, two wings. 
Y'all love that song? Two wings to fly away and the world. Listen, listen. You're not getting two wings. You're getting a body. When someone wants to throw the don't judge me card, this is the scripture that they make reference to and they use it out of context. Glory to God. They use it out of context. They say, for all have sinned and come short. Look at the context. Verse number 20. Read. I'll read verse number 19. Now we know that whatsoever things the law said, it is said to them who are under the what? Somebody say under the law. So it's making reference to the law. Somebody say the law is holy. Now the law is holy. Now the law is good. But the law does not make a man holy. The law was given so that we might, so we were brought to a point that we might recognize that we were in need of a savior. So the law brought us to this point and the law, the law caused us, all of us, to become guilty. So he says, watch this, that every, that every mouth, somebody say every mouth. So people can't be walking around talking about, I'm better than you, you better than me, you're more holy than I because you dress this way, because you don't dress that way. None of that. He said the law was given that every one of us might become guilty. So what is that? That every mouth might be stopped. Read, what does that say? And that the what now? I'm about to shout. That the whole what now? What does it mean when it says the whole world? That the whole world might become what now? Now read verse number 23. I can't read all the rest. Read verse number 23 now. For all have what now? This has nothing to do with acts of sin. This has to do with every one of us becoming guilty because of the sentence that's been passed on us. Watch this. I'm about to write this down. You're guilty without even committing the act. Write it down. Guilty without even committing the act. Why? Because of the sin nature that's been passed down to you. You mean to tell me, you mean to tell me, little cute Timmy, he's a sinner? You, you, you mean to tell me, Sister Kizzy, you mean to tell me she gonna have, not my, but what? That the whole world because of what Adam and Eve did in the garden, the death sentence came upon every man by one man's disobedience. Many were made sinners, but through the obedience of one man, many will be made righteous. For all have sinned. We all, and I even did. All have sinned and come short. I don't care if you commit this thing and don't commit that. All have sinned and come short. Oh. But grace has put me in a place now. I'm not coming short. You, you, you can't receive what I just said. That Jesus has put me in a position. He has seated me in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. And he has washed me of all of my sins. And so now I've been accepted. There's a difference between being accepted and coming short. Coming short means there is nothing you can do to clear yourself. There is nothing you can do to justify yourself. There is nothing you can do to make yourself holy. Ah, but the blood of Jesus had justified me the blood of Jesus had sanctified me the blood of Jesus had washed me y'all better say amen verse 24 being justified freely by his what now through the redemption that is in who whom God had set for it read to be the mercy seat that's what propitiation means through what now through what now to declare righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. I'm going to ask you again. Can you cleanse yourself of sin? Thank you. So when the topic was in chapter 7, cleanse yourself, it was denoting that this cleansing had nothing to do with sin. Jesus, y'all ready for this? Jesus is not sitting up in heaven. Every time you do something good, 
get a merit. When you do something wrong, you're out of his grace and his goodwill. Go to Romans chapter number 6. Romans chapter number 6. I got a few more minutes. Stay with me. I got a few more minutes. Somebody say stick with him. Stick with him. Can somebody give me, can you give me my envelope again? I want to show you again. I did the first service. Let me show you again. Watch this. Watch this. The Bible said in Romans chapter number 6, what shall we say then? Read. Romans 6 and 1. What shall we say then? Read. Shall we do what now? Here's the answer. Verse 2 answers the question. Read. God forbid. How shall we? Read. Keep reading. I like the explanation. Let's stop. Now, I like the explanation. He tells you. He asks questions. How? Now, I want you guys to understand that what was going on was this. That there were people that were asking Paul questions. When Paul started teaching on the grace of God, and when he started saying that you cannot be saved through the law or any kind of law, and when he starts talking about the blood of Jesus is the only way to have your sins remitted, people start asking some questions because they are accustomed to the law. They're accustomed to certain rituals. They're accustomed to certain sacrifices. And so they ask questions, and Paul answers them in letter form. He sends the letter out to a church. Are y'all with me? And so he answers them, and so they ask ask this question and they're going through this and they're reasoning and they're trying to come up with something logical and the apostle says this. He said, hold on, God forbid. But then he gives an explanation. How shall we that are what now? Many preachers stop right there. Shall we continue in sin that great? God forbid. No, show no. And they stop right there. And he never gives us an explanation of why. Because when a preacher starts teaching on grace, the question becomes, are you telling me I can do, or can I do what I want to do and make it to heaven? And he's not saying that, and that is not the message. Look what he said. What does it mean to be dead from sin? Write this down. To be dead from sin, for those you listen on, means that sin has been separated from your spirit. Sin has been separated from you. Watch this. Initially... Sin separated you from God. The same thing happened in the beginning. You're born into the world of sinner, so you're separated from God. There's a wedge between you and God. Are you listening to me? But the Bible said because of the blood of Jesus, Jesus brought us back into, uh, he reconciled us, brought us in right standing with God. I got to show y'all something. Stay with me. Stay with me. Somebody say he brought us into right standing with God. I promise I'm going to finish this. I got a few more minutes. Go to the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter number 19. Exodus chapter number 19. Are y'all with me so far? Am I helping anybody out? Jesus brought us into right standing with God. Exodus chapter number 19. Verse number 12. See, the law brought also the knowledge of sin, but also brought the death sentence. In Exodus chapter 19, God was dealing with his people, Brother Caleb, and God was being very gracious. He was dealing with them. He was supplying for them. They were complaining and nothing was happening. God was supplying for his people. He was showing them grace. But what happens was they make this pact. They say, God, all that you say will do. And then all of a sudden, God's tone began to change. Verse number, watch this, 19, chapter 19, verse number 12. Watch this. And thou shalt set what? If you ever read the book of Exodus, 
Elder Pearl, God goes from telling them, I'm going to provide for them, I'm going to be Jehovah Jireh, I'm going to be their banner, and then all of a sudden, Brother Marvin, we get to this portion of scripture where God said, don't touch it unless you're going to die. And you're like, oh, what happened? Did you just have a mood swing? Did you just get angry at me? But what happened was this is the penalty of the law. In other words, when the law comes now, now it brings also the death sentence or the death penalty with it. And so you see all throughout when the law was instituted and the law was established, there was always these boundaries between God and the people. And God saying, I don't want any boundaries between me and the people. And so if you read the book of Exodus, don't touch, don't touch, don't touch, unless you be put to death. God is actually saying, he's making himself saying, don't approach me unless you come like this or else you're going to die. Don't approach me. But what Jesus has done under the new covenant, he's reconciled us to God. And not only do we have the grace to approach him, but he lives in us. His plan was to always live in us, not live in a building, not be on a cart, but his plan was always to live on the inside of us. He always wanted fellowship with us, Adam. He always wanted to live with us and walk with us and talk with us. And so what happened was he, Jesus reconciled us by and through his blood. And now we have a new and a living way, the veil, that is to say his flesh, that we have boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Not one time a year like the high priest. Not once a year, but every day. Not just every day, but any second of the day. Jesus had made me acceptable unto God. And now we have peace with God through our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. In other words, for those you listening on, me and God don't have no problems. Uh, I don't care how much you don't like it. You probably going to get irritated because I'm not all the way there yet and I'm still in the process. But me and God don't have no problems. Me and God don't have no smoke. Me and God don't have no beef. Me and God don't have no wedge. God is not angry at me. God is not mad at me. Y'all don't like that. From the old to the new. He, watch this. Somebody, buddy. Same God. He's the same God. He's the same God, but the terms have been meant. <laughs> God was telling man that you can't approach me because I'm too holy. Y'all better say amen. God was telling man I'm too holy for you to approach me. I'm too holy. Nah, nah. You can only see me over here. You can only see me like that. You got to approach me like this. But Jesus was able to fulfill the holiness. He was able to fulfill the righteousness that the law demanded. And he has become my meal ticket to God. He has become my holiness. He has become my sanctifier. In case you, in case you think that anybody could just approach God, can't, there wasn't no anybody could approach Him. They had to go through all these rituals, and only the only the high priest can go, and even the high priest could have died if he didn't approach Him. Watch this, such the right way. Look, look, well, well, look at what God has done for you. Look at what God has done for you. Now you're saying, but pastor, but you mean, I just don't want to be, I just want fear. Nothing to do with you feel. Baby, God is living in you. What you mean? He's come to take up his residence. What do you mean? No, you're not. He says we were baptized. That was a, a, a sub point. That was a, a, a side point. Back to Romans 6. No, you're not. That so many of you, as were baptized, and I close with this, were baptized. The bat word baptized means to be fully covered, fully immersed, fully submerged. Are you with me? This is an illustration I gave on last week. Y'all ready for this? You ready for this, Elder? In other words, if, I, if, if this is me, then he says, I, I, I've... You you come up under my cover my covering. I'm you 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 fully covered. 
No, 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 no you, 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 you fully covered. This is not a baptism in water. This is the baptism through the faith operation, Colossians explains it. This happened by faith when you accepted Jesus. This is a baptism into his death. This is a baptism into his body. Are you listening to him? Not a baptism in the H2O water. He said, this is what happens to you when you accepted him as Lord and Savior. Now, y'all going to get mad at this, but watch this. If I mess around and do this, and if I do this, then this thing is sealed now. Are you understanding what I'm saying? This thing is sealed. I need for you to understand this is not a schizophrenic Christianity. I need for you to understand when you do wrong you don't come up out of here. I need for you to understand you don't come in and out every time you think of something wrong. You're in and out. You're back in. God God don't kick you in and out pastors. I did good today. I feel good about myself. So I'm in. I lied last night. So I'm out again. Save me again Lord. Kids like eight years old talking about save me again. I was doing good for four months, but 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 I smoked reefer again. I'm not saying reefer is not wrong. I'm, I'm condemning the act, but I'm not condemning you as a person. You're still in, even though you smoke. Oh, I better not say that. I, I cussed again. No, I ain't cussed in a year. I, I, is God kicking me out? No, He's not putting you out good news. You're still in. This grace is such good news that it's hard to phantom with the logical mind, with the mind that tries to reason. The mind that tries to reason says God must be king. Same God. I'll be hearing my son him say on the game. He said, you're dead. Watch this. If you were under the law, you would be so dead by now. Because even though there are certain things that you don't do, watch this. When Jesus starts interpreting the spirit of the law, he says, so, okay, you think that the man who commits the act of adultery is the guilty one. He says, I tell you, he said, the man that thinks upon it, the man that will undress the woman in the, um, the imagination is guilty of committing that. Oh, you, li I am telling you, you would have been dead a thousand times today. You your unbelief is dead. Your, your bickering, dead. Your mummering, dead. I'm telling you, you better thank God for his grace. You better thank God for his blood. Because if not, death would be your portion. You sitting there pious and self-righteous thinking that you, you, you better than somebody because of how you looking and because you I get my colognes from Saxon I get my suits from Saxon and you get yours from Walmart it has nothing to do with that but it has something to do with the blood of Jesus the blood has a voice the blood of Jesus is speaking on your bed the blood is over my life I'm done and take not the Holy Spirit away from me. I don't want you to cast, cast, cast me now. Cast me now, God. Don't cast me, little old me. Cast me. Watch this. We're all, all, all showing symptoms of a bowed down believer. Cast me not out of your presence, Lord. Please and please and pretty please don't take your Holy Spirit away from me. Bowed down believer. The oppressed believer. And the enemy doesn't want you to have confidence in what God has done for you. He wants to keep you ignorant of what Jesus has already provided for you before the battle ever starts before the first punch is ever thrown the victory has already been determined God has already said for me and mine I go hard after mine as for me and mine I protect mine I defend mine I love my are you listening to what I'm saying sorry but I'm not going in and out and he's not marking, accusing, or imputing sin to my account. Wait, are you listening? Now, what I'm teaching you today and what we'll be teaching you is how to overcome. I did all that to show you that you cannot cleanse yourself from sin. But that it is your responsibility to cleanse yourself from the filth of the flesh in the spirit by taking a bath daily. Several times a day. Y'all better say amen. 
is my introduction. I quit. That's it for the day. We're going to get into the cleansing of your soul. I needed to make clear that your spirit doesn't need any cleansing. I hope I made that clear. Did I make it clear? Did I make it clear that your spirit doesn't need, that your spirit is like God, your spirit is holy, the Holy Ghost lives there, the Holy Ghost is not schizophrenic, he ain't jumping out, he's with you everywhere you go, you can't hide from him, everywhere you go, he's there, if you happen to tip up and go in somebody's club with the Holy Ghost, he's there, matter of fact, he's going to be the one that's telling you, you got to get out of here, you go over and mess around and be in the wrong bed, he's there, he's going to be the one that's telling you, you got to get up out of this bed, if you mess around and have, and put the reefer to your He's going to tell you, wait a minute now, he's there. He's the one that's going to be telling you, you're righteous so you shouldn't be doing it. If you mess around and slip and say something crazy to your husband, he's going to be the person that's there. They're going to tell you, wait a minute, you're holy, you shouldn't be talking like that. Are you listening to me? And that is conviction, not condemnation. Man, that word was just beating me up. No, that's your own voice, and that's how you perceive, and that's how you've heard preachers teach. Jesus, the Holy Spirit, does not beat you up. He convicts you. He does not uphold you, but he does not beat you up with the word. Just slapping you. Just beat me up with the word. Well, y'all getting it. Without proper balance, you will sit and listen to a whole message long preacher and he kill you and put you back in hell after you got saved, after you got, after you came off of three days. Am I saved or not? <laughs> don't let a pastor get mad at you because you don't keep your seed off and they'll kill you. Oh, you didn't give your portion? You didn't, you didn't give what you, oh, you dead. You're dead. Death, watch this, y'all. If you don't watch it, Elder Pearl, you will be a, a tongue-slinging, Holy Ghost-filled, Bible-toting, word-cutting, law-based preacher that will kill people with the word. I'm talking about just kill people with more word than anything. Get the machete out his hands. He's dangerous. The letter kill it, but the spirit give it light. God rebukes you. He reproves you, but he never threatens. God, that's, that's your daddy, but not you. I kill you, boy. That's not God. That's your daddy's voice. Y'all, now see y'all laughing. I'm trying to teach you something. Boy, I'll kill you. That ain't God telling you he's going to kill you. Y'all give him praise for clarity today. better start preaching and put the fear of God in those people. If the Holy Ghost don't put the fear of God in you, I'm done. The Bible said one of the attributes of the Spirit in in, in the book of Isaiah chapter 11 is the fear of the Lord. The Holy Spirit comes. And when it says fear, it's referring to the reverential fear of the Lord. Not that I'm going to slap you if you don't do it. See, that's doctrine. That's that's experience and it's what you've been going through. And it has to be corrected. You see that in majesty. You are the risen king. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah, you have won it all for me, and death could not hold you down. You are the risen King, yeah, yeah, you see that in man. Majesty, yeah, you are the risen King. 
the book. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who did he do it for? You have won it all for me. And that could not hold you down. That could not hold you down? And that could not hold you down. One more time. That could not hold you down. And that could not hold you down. Yeah, you are. You are the risen king. And you see that. Seated in majesty. Yeah, yeah. You are the risen king. One last time, church. Lift, stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. If that could not hold you. That could not hold you. That could not hold you down. You are the risen king. Yeah, yeah. Seated in majesty. Yeah, yeah. You are the risen king. won the victory hallelujah you have won it all for me cause that could not hold you down you are the risen yeah, you see that in majesty. Yeah, yeah, you are the risen king. And Father, we honor you. You see that, which means I'm not working to cleanse you, I'm not working. I've already done it. I've saved you. Not only have I saved you, but I've healed you. Somebody say he's healed me. He took all of your emotional wounds, all of your emotional bandage, baggage, everything that you was to deal with emotionally, he took it all upon him. 
And there was an exchange. He took all of your sins. He took all of your hurt. And he gave you healing. Y'all ready for this? You ready for this? God has already healed you. Stop praying to God to be healed. Healing is on you and healing is in you and on you. And your job is to believe, to receive, to agree with what Jesus has already done. So I declare healing today. If you're in this building and you're not saved, lift your hands. If you're not saved, your health has come to you. The Bible says he sent this word to heal us from our destruction. If you're not saved, if you listen to only you're not saved, God, right there, right where you are, right in your house, right in your car, right where you are, right, there's no distance or time, he wants to save you. If you just say, Lord, come into my heart right now. Lord, I understand there's nothing I can do to save myself. I can't cleanse myself from sin. I can't save myself. I can't do it. I need a Savior. I need you to save me. The Bible says if you believe in your heart that Jesus died and he rose, if you believe it, he says, in that moment, that time, you're saved. You're delivered. So, Father, we thank you right now for saving us, for healing us. We thank you. And I thank you right now, Lord, that we grow in your grace and in your knowledge. And I pray, Lord, that everything that we have received from you, that we begin to manifest and walk it out in our lives. Lord, that we are not the bowed down believer. That we do not walk in ignorance, but we walk in the fullness. We thank you for the authority that's been given unto us. And we honor you for it right now. Somebody say, I receive it right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's sow into the word of God. Come on, say, I receive it right now. Come on, this word has been a blessing to you. Let's sow into the word of God. Jesus has already done it. We're just agreeing with it. Hallelujah. Somebody say, God is good. You can't beat God's giving. Somebody say, I can't beat his giving. No matter how hard you try. Come on, the word has been a blessing. Let's soar into the word of God. Raise your hand if you have some clarification today. Raise your hand if, I, if, if things are opened up today. Raise your hand if you, if you understand the word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. For it is the Father's good pleasure to give unto you the kingdom. Some of you saying, Pastor Kevin, I just, I, I, got, I got to pray. I got to pray. I just, I, I, need, I need more money. He's already wired you for those you didn't hear he's already wired you things have already been established and set up laws and principles that you don't so much have to pray hard you just have to honor the principle you just have to get into agreement with what he's already said concerning your finances amen somebody says it's already done my agreement enables me to draw from the endless supply of the spirit somebody says it's endless the Bible says the increase of his kingdom and his government, there shall be no end. For back of a letter, lack of a better word, and just to try to give you some imagery, God, God have like a million ways to bless you. For like, there's more than a million, but God got like a million ways to get things to you. The Bible said, but though he suffers long with us, for those who believe, for those who know their rights, he will answer them speedily. A person that doesn't know their rights, a person that's bowed down, a person that's ignorant of the truth will always be begging, pleading with God, begging him to do things for them that he's already accomplished through the finished work. And as we close, that's why I endeavor to be your teacher. I endeavor to teach you. I don't know everything. I don't know everything. But the revelation and that which I have received, I'm going to give it to you. I believe as a result of the revelation I received, I believe your lives will be better. Look, Jesus has already made heaven better. No, no, heaven is already the best place. But while we're here on earth, it's the revelation that unlocks the fullness of God's blessing. And the more revelation you receive, and as you receive another part, you're in position to live better. You're in position to live your best life, the best life. I'm not talking about that song. I'm talking about the kingdom. Somebody ought to put a smile on your face and thank Jesus for what he's already provided. If you have your offering prepared, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for what you've already provided through your blood and through the finished work. 
And Father, we sometimes we can't even comprehend or understand this grace. This we can't even understand it at times. But Father, I'm just grateful. I'm grateful. I, I, I boast in you. I understand there's nothing I can do on my own. And so, Lord, we we thank you. We we honor you for the Holy Spirit and teaching us. And we're just grateful today. I pray that you continue to surround us and add another part and give us more revelation, Father, so that we can walk in the fullness of the blessing that you have already provided for us. Protect your people. Preserve your people. Prosper your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Us as you may serve the people. Thank you, Jesus. As you finish giving your offering, stand to your feet. We're getting out of here. Thank you for your presence today. Stand to your feet. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for everything you've accomplished through the finished work to the cross. Thank you, Lord, for the blessing that has been bestowed upon us. Thank you, Lord, that the soul cycle is broken, is being broken. Lord, that we're in the process, Lord, that you're processing us to be transformed into the image of your son. Thank you for that. Let this be a week of divine connection, divine impartation, and growth. Protect us. Preserve us. Prosper us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. See you next time.